G'day everyone, my name's Lucas. So, Wi-Fi. It's great, isn't it? Available almost everywhere nowadays. It lets you look at memes from any location in the world. Come look at this. Surely there's nothing bad that can happen from using Wi-Fi, right? If you think so, you must be new here. Welcome to SumSub, your practical course on survival in the deceptive digital world. Now let's talk about wireless connections. I would like you guys to cast your mind back to those lovely pre-COVID days. You touch down at the airport of a foreign country, be it the US, the UK, any place starting with a U really, or any other letter. Remember, what would you always do when getting off the plane first? Even before you got to passport control or get your luggage, it's obvious. You would probably try to find Wi-Fi, connect and send off a couple messages to friends and family, order a taxi to the hotel, or check any emails that have come through during a long flight. Personally, I like to search for the closest and cheapest place for local cuisine. Eat there and get sick immediately. You shouldn't do this. Not the food, but the Wi-Fi. If you care about your network security, you definitely shouldn't connect to unknown public networks in the airport or anywhere else. I'm gonna tell you why. On Saturday, February 20th, 2016, Barcelona airport was crowded. Thousands of participants for the Mobile World Congress, the largest exhibition of modern electronics, gathered in the northeastern Spanish city of Catalonia. The exhibition organizers had planned and arranged a fun, interesting, and comfortable event. International journalists and the local media were everywhere. It was possible to confirm registration and get accreditation at the arrival lounge. But as a result of this, Queues were piling up at the check-in counters. Luckily for everybody, there were three convenient public Wi-Fi networks working in the zone simultaneously. In four hours, more than 2,000 people had connected to these networks. We know for sure that half of them used an iPhone, slightly less than half used the superior Android smartphone, and just a few were using Windows Mobile and wearing their fedoras. 62% checked their email and searched for information on Google, while 15% curiously preferred Yahoo. 50 people listened to music and podcasts while they waited, and more than a dozen planned to arrange dates using Tinder or Badoo. How do we know that? The open networks these people connected to had nothing to do with the coffee chain, the airport, or the organizers of the exhibition. It's a trap! It's a trap! The wireless equipment was brought in by engineers from Avast. It was an experiment. They decided to set up free Wi-Fi and find out how responsible mobile market specialists are when it comes to their personal phone's network. All data in these networks were scanned and processed by specific traffic analyzer programs. A couple of days later, Avast specialists shared the results of their experiments. And the main sensation was the statement that about 1,300 people, that is approximately half of those who connected to the Wi-Fi, lost their anonymity. Programmers managed to get data about their names, emails, and social network accounts. We know all your secrets. Of course, Avast programmers were not intruders, thankfully. They just wanted to draw attention to how easily even professional users of mobile devices can fall into these scammer traps. The attendees of the event didn't hesitate to connect to the networks whose names seemed familiar or understandable. Well, if mobile professionals can be tricked so easily, where does that leave Courtney when she's trolling for Wi-Fi at McDonald's at 3 a.m. in the morning? In addition, if a hacker plans to attack you specifically, he can even copy the identifier of a Wi-Fi connection that is familiar to you, for example, your home or office network, and simulate its signal elsewhere. What this means is that when you see a familiar network, your smartphone or laptop can automatically connect to it, thinking it is already connected to one previously, without even you noticing. To counter this, always manually manage the connections of your devices to wireless networks, and disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you aren't using them, right here, right now. Now imagine you didn't connect to that suspicious airport network. Instead, you decided to wait for the hotel where it's nice and safe. You are already in the room, looking at your Tinder messages, wondering where the hell Courtney is. You open up the list of available networks and you see two possible connections. A familiar picture. The hotel is large, so several different routers being used to connect all the guests to the network doesn't seem suspicious. Of course, most of us will choose the network with the strongest signal strength. After opening it, we usually go to the page with the hotel logo, which will then ask us to identify ourselves, for example, entering your first and last name, 
using your phone number, or even sometimes paying for the network services with a credit card straight away. If you often like to travel inexpensively, then such actions have most likely already become second nature. When traveling, mobile data is gold, and anyone would try to save as much of that data as they can. This is doubly true when we take into account roaming charges. Everything would be fine, but by choosing the second network on your phone in the hotel, we fall into the clutches of cyber criminals. Despite the name and logo, this chain has nothing to do with the hotel. It was created in order to get your personal information or plastic card data under the guise of a regular service. The attacker is sitting in the room next to you, perhaps pouring poor Courtney a glass of wine while using a more powerful router than the one installed in the hotel. So the Honeypot network looks all the more enticing. It takes a few minutes to simulate the hotel's login page and only seconds to come up with an appropriate network name. Well, you see, I'm not really hacking the Wi-Fi. I'm hacking you. Of course, so that you don't immediately suspect fraud, after entering the requested data, the attacker will really connect you to the internet, perhaps even through a real hotel network. But from now on, all traffic will be traveling through the attacker's device first. Such an attack is called a man in the middle attack, or MITM for short. The hacker assumes the role of an unsolicited intermediary and gets the opportunity to analyze or falsify that data that you are exchanging with others. Many people believe that when using HTTPS sites, data is securely encrypted. This is true, but only partially. Firstly, without even decrypting the traffic, attackers can get information that they will then use to plan an attack. Let the hacking begin. For example, they can get a list of websites that you work with or determine the size and type of downloaded files. The website data will help to access your information in social networks through the downloaded files to slip in a file in a format that's familiar to you. Secondly, many forms of encryption you may use can be bypassed. Special programs allow intruders to decrypt and substitute your traffic. Although this trick won't work so easily with Google or Facebook services, other services are not so secure. The use of VPNs, which were described in our video about ways to achieve network anonymity, will help protect you against these types of traffic interceptions. The principal operation of a VPN is similar to a proxy. All the information exchanged with sites on the internet go via an intermediary server. All traffic through the VPN is encrypted, regardless of whether the Wi-Fi network or the site you are working with provides a secure connection. Even if an attacker intercepts the information, he will not be able to analyze and decrypt it successfully. Now, I will tell you about another threat that public Wi-Fi networks carry. The story of American entrepreneur Noah Dinkin is a cautionary tale of internet security for all those who care to listen. A young programmer from New York flew to Buenos Aires for negotiations. While waiting for the meeting, Noah decided to get a pick-me-up by grabbing himself a cup of coffee at Starbucks, at the same time checking his email. His spider senses began tingling when he noticed the delay with which the laptop connected to the network. About 10 seconds extra. Mysterious. Ooh. Noah decided to figure out what went wrong. To his amazement, he discovered that during this time, his browser had downloaded and launched a script for mining Monero. It turned out that hundreds of other visitors to the Argentine Starbucks had, over a cup of coffee, mined cryptocurrency for unknown intruders. <coughs> After 10 days, it turned out that the malicious code was added by a company that provided communication services. But how long it lasted? and how much the scam has managed to earn is anybody's guess. At the end of July, 2021, the National Security Agency put an end to the disputes about the security of public Wi-Fi points. Avoid connecting to public Wi-Fi when possible, they stated, as there is an increased risk when using public Wi-Fi networks. These recommendations apply to all government officials, law enforcement agencies, military personnel, defense contractors, and people associated with state secrets. The NSA recommendations do not guarantee security, but only mitigate the risk of using wireless devices. So, how can you protect yourself if you still can't live without public Wi-Fi networks? Here is our list. Firstly, use a VPN. Traffic encryption in a virtual network will significantly complicate the life of attackers. Do not enter unnecessary personal data on internet authorization pages. In a hotel, usually the room number is sufficient, 
in public places, well, your mobile phone isn't gonna see you get compromised too badly. If the network does not allow you to connect without specifying your credit card number, you can always use an online credit card generator in advance. Don't hesitate to check the reliability of a network with the staff of the business you're residing in. Waiters in the restaurant, the porter in the hotel, etc. This way you can avoid any of those nasty phishing networks. I also recommend disabling auto connection to known networks in your phone and laptop settings. This will protect you from duplicate Wi-Fi networks. In case of any suspicious behavior on your device or phone programs, long loading, slowing down, overheating, just disconnect from these networks immediately. CoinHive has officially ceased its work, but dozens of other developers are following in its footsteps. Regularly update your operating system and programs. In large public networks, malware often tries to sneak into your device through known vulnerabilities. Like the street food guy who sold me a kebab by offering me a free side of chips. Don't use public networks to perform banking transactions. Do not enter passwords or send confidential information via an app. To access social media networks and mail, always use two-factor authorization. This will protect your password against interception and session copying. And my biggest advice to you all is to stay on the SumSub channel. Don't eat late night kebabs and follow along as we uncover new predators in the online digital jungle. Take care of yourself, your precious Wi-Fi, and your stomach. I'll see you soon.